All right, we're back for the second video of the Excel uh, Chapter 1, Basic Introduction to Excel. And in this example, we're doing and carrying on with our personal budget. All right, so in the next thing I want to do in this video is, is have a look at uh, the formatting, I guess, of the budget. Now, if you look at this, of course, all the information is here. We went through, we did our data entry, we did our calculations. It all kind of works, but it looks terrible. So I'm going to start off by going through the first column and, and addressing each issue one by one. So my first one is my budget. Now the budget probably should be capitalized. It should be highlighted or something like that. It should be prominent. So what I can do with this is if, I, if I'm pro projecting out my budget, let's just assume for the, for the first quarter of the year, I could just select all five of those cells. And then under the Home tab, there's something here called Merge this one here, merge in the center, takes all five of those cells, creates one cell and puts everything in the center. So that gives it sort of a, a title looking. So this is the budget. Now the size, I can make it larger. I can change the font, change the color, and we're good to go. And maybe one more last thing I, I might do is I might put a, a line underneath. So we can manipulate the fonts with this font group right here. That looks pretty good. And we can also adjust the alignment of the text with this group over here. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now, the word income is similar in its um, importance to expenses and similar to savings. So what I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to take income. I'm going to hold the control key down. I'm going to say expenses and I'm going to go savings. And all three of those, I want to apply the same um, attributes. So in this case, I'm going to make it a little bit larger. So I'll make it a 13 point bold and I'll make it the same blue so that they really kind of stand out there. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is my data points. Now, my data points are places where I'm entering in individual data. So job one, job 1.5, job two, and then all of these down here. So I'm, in this case, I'm going to select this range, hold the control key down, and I'm going to select all of these, not the, the, not the total. And in that case, all of those, I'm going to leave maybe as black, but I'm going to tab them in a little bit to make, make it look like these are sub items under my income. So my income has sub points right here. Now I could change this to italics and I could do all sorts of um, other things to it, but um, I think that's, that looks okay, I guess, right now. There are standards that you can use uh, for financial um um, statements. And when you're working with a company, a lot of companies will have a, a template, a theme that they're going to use. Now, we will talk about themes later on, but for now, we're just kind of going through and explaining how the clipboard, the alignment, numbers, and, and that sort of thing. But w there is options of going through here and changing like the cell styles so they're consistent. Now, a lot of companies do follow this and they have a particular look because they want all their financial statements to look the same. So wherever you guys end up working, you want to go through and figure out, well, what's the style going to look like? All right. So we're in this example, we're really working through um, these ones here, this first ribbon um, right here anyway. All right. Now, total, there's one total there and there's a total here. Those are common data points. I'm going to make those bold because to me, the total of these is very important. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my underlines. I want an underline for my totals. So I'm going to take those two right there. And I'm going to use this one here called the top and double bottom border. This is very common for a lot of companies to, to show the bottom line of what the cost is. And you can see already we're, we're starting, to, um, it's starting to look a little bit more um, pleasant. So it looks like more like a financial statement. Now, I, I, you might have noticed I zoomed in and zoomed out pretty quickly here. You can zoom in and out th through the control down here on the bottom right corner, or I can hold the control key down and use the mouse roller, the mouse wheel, and just roll it up, increase or decrease. You probably know that little trick. All right, um, January is over on the left because it's a label, and the numbers are on the right because they're values, so there's a disconnect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my January, and I'll just move it over to the right, and maybe make it bold. All right, looking pretty good so far. Now, all of these right here, the, the numbers themselves, including what my savings are going to be, is our, our financial numbers. And they're more importantly, they're, they're currency. So what I'm going to do is select all those. And under my number format, I'm going to change those to um, 
with a Canadian, well, actually, it's just English. I mean, these are both I- identical, pretty much. Um, I think I don't think there's any subtlety between the two. Oh, there is. Now, if you look carefully, there's a little bit of a subtlety. The Canadian one moves over just slightly, and I think that's because it, with negative numbers, they put brackets, and with the Americans, they put a negative sign. I think it happens more if you have a negative. All right, so I'm going to stick with the Canadian version for now. And it puts in two decimal places for pennies, but you may not want pennies because it's just a budget and you're just estimating. So I'm going to take the number of decimal places, push it once, push it twice, and get rid of those. Ah, that looks a lot better. All right. Now, with that said, I, I did indicate that I wanted to project this out for the first quarter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want all of this data and I want I don't want to redo all that. Now that it looks good, and I want to project it out to Jan- January, to February, to March, to April. That would be the first, uh, actually the first quarter would be just January, February, March. So I'm going to take uh, the first one. And you'll notice down here at the bottom, there's a little tab right here. Whenever you see a selected cell in a tab, it means you can grab this and copy this relatively. Which means, relative copy means, if I move from this column to this column, January becomes February. Uh, 1,000 is still 1,000. There's nothing that's really um, should change. Let me just try that. There we go. And you'll notice that the numbers didn't change, but the months changed because this is relative. All right. And then from there, I could just finish this off by going in and let's put in a total. Nice. All right. So that's my first quarter of my budget for 2020, which has already passed according to, at the time of this video. But that's okay. Now, we've got these right here and i want to total them up i want to know what how much money did i make for the first quarter and again you could have forecast this out for the entire year but for this video i just did the quarter so the first three months of the year now if i want i could do the same thing i did in the previous video i could go equal to and i could type in the function here called sum select those three and press enter or close the bracket but just press enter and it calculates that, perfect. And I can repeat that process, equal to the sum and so on. But to make this quicker, I could actually just, um, this is a really quick trick, Over because we'd sum up so much in Excel, up here in the right-hand corner, in the editing group, there's the sigma symbol right here. And this allows me to sum up, average count, do some basic fundamental aggregate type of calculations. So in this case, I could select that and just click the auto sum and bam, it it writes it all for you. You have to be careful though, and watch really carefully that it's adding up the right things. So I push enter. Now let's add up job number two. Click on Sigma, and it says, oh, do you want these ones up here? No, I don't. So it shows you that it works, but doesn't. you gotta still check it. I don't want that range, I want this range right here. Press enter, perfect. And then one final one, it wouldn't really matter if I summed up this answer or I summed up this. They both come up with the same. And that's a good way of checking. In fact, if you select all three, down here it says that's $10,500. If I select all of these, that's $10,500. Perfect. What I tend to do is use the same pattern. So I would tend to use the same pattern as I did above. So if I click on it, it comes up with the right answer. Now, if I didn't do that, if I just let the computer decide, it comes up with its own pattern. But the answer is still the same. I would prefer to be consistent myself because it does have it does play an impact later on when we start um, doing more advanced formulas. All right. Now, if you want to do all this at the same time, you can be even quicker at it. You can say, so let's select all of this and click Sigma. And it's all done at one shot. So you can see by learning these basic tricks how quick and efficient you can be at creating a financial uh, spreadsheet. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now, something we know we didn't do was the savings down here at the bottom. So are we trying to sum this up? No. Could we use the sum function to do this? We probably could. We could probably say, let's sum up um, this number here. That's my income, so that's a positive. Let's put in another argument, minus how much did I spend in my expenses? And it comes back with nothing. It's just a, a little dash. Well, that makes sense because I my income is the same as my expenses. So let's add a little bit more money here. Let's say I make $600 for my job 1.5. And you can see here, it, the what if, what if I made this much? Now I've got $100 in savings. Perfect. 
Now that's not really the best way to add that up. This, this, let's go back and revisit this formula. Now the sum function is great for summing up common numbers, but there's a lot of times when you just need a, a, a individual formula. I want to take how much my income is, 3,500. I'm going to press plus and I'm going to type in how much my self or how much my total expenses are. And oh, it comes up. I'm adding the two. Well, didn't want to add the two. I want to subtract it. So I could either redo it or I could double click on it and just change the, the operator here the, and then come up with the correct answer. Perfect. All right, now I could go ahead and repeat that same function one, two, three more times. Or I could simply take the corner and copy it as a relative copy. Now, when I say relative copy, it means this one right here, this formula right here, if I double click it, it takes column B6 and B19. And then if I copy it over here, it relatively copies it to C6 and C19. You can see now, let's go in here and double click on it. There it is. You can see it's color coded. So what's really nice about this is that once you've done a formula once correctly, you can grab the corner and just copy it across. There you go. All right. So from that point, what I tend to do, and this is just my own personal thing, is I tend to, one more formatting feature, is I tend to highlight the cells that I'm going to need to do my data entry. So I'm going to highlight all of these, so I'm going to highlight with my mouse, I'm going to hold the control key down, and I'm going to highlight all those. All of that is data entry. Everything else is a constant or a formula that I don't really want to touch. And what I tend to do with mine is I put in like a subtle, um, not the font, sorry, I want the background, and I put in a very subtle color change. There we go. So it's a trigger for me to know that when I'm I'm playing the what if situation, I can I can change anything that's in blue here. So I don't want to touch this. This is working fine. So if I want, I can go in here and say, well, my job number one in February, I got more hours, but in March, I dropped my hours. And then job two, I could do something similar where I went up each job. I'm trying to get more hours. And, but unfortunately job number two went down to 19 and back up to 22. All right. So I can enter in my data here and it dynamically changes that what if situation changes here. Fantastic. All right, now, same thing here. We can go through and we can start forecasting out because what we're trying to do is we're looking at the what if. Like we're, we're trying to save some money. That's really our goal here. We don't want to go into debt. So the bigger picture to doing this whole exercise is to put in the data that we know to do the calculations that give us the answer to forecast what we need to do. And if you think about it, this can actually help, you know, um, guide your lifestyle to a degree, because I mean, this is our lifestyle, where we live, how we drive, what we eat, clothes, etc. So based on what you guys type in here, and if you stick to that budget, it will have an impact on that first quarter, or if you guys forecasted this out for the entire year. So maybe you have a goal in mind. Maybe your goal is to save a thousand dollars. And that's what, exactly what this is going to allow you to do. So you have to ask yourself now the question, what if I can change my rent? Is there a way you can change? Can you go up to your, ask your landlord, say, hey, Mr. Landlord, I don't like paying a thousand. I want $900. Probably it's not going to happen. In fact, it, it could even go up. Uh, could you get a roommate? That's a possibility, but I mean, maybe you don't want to live with somebody um, or maybe you are, and this is just what it is. Maybe your transportation, maybe you're paying too much for parking. Um, you say, hey, I could, I could deduct my parking bill and I could just don't have to park as much or maybe, or I don't have to drive as much or I get cheaper insurance. I could find, and you're going to ask yourself these questions for each item. Can I spend less on food? You know, can I make my lunch? Maybe if I make my lunch every day, I can save a hundred dollars. Maybe I don't go to Starbucks every day. I can save $200. Maybe my clothes, I don't buy anything in February. But then, you know what? In March, I need the spring fashion. I'm going to buy a little more there. My cell phone, maybe it's fixed. Maybe you guys have uh, extra charges on it. So you have, you have to be careful with that. The utilities maybe are higher. Actually, they're $60 in January because it's colder. It's 50 and then it gets warmer. School, maybe you pay monthly. Maybe you pay a lump sum right up front. And then you don't pay any more after that. All right. 
travel, maybe you just you're putting aside $100 for travel or you say, you know what? That's it. I'm not having any travel budget whatsoever for the first term because I'm at school and I don't need that. My entertainment. Wow. $500 for entertainment. Uh, you know, I, you like to go out and have drinks, go to movies, whatnot. Maybe you want to pay a little more on your credit card, pay your debts off faster. So you add another $100 here. And every time I type something in, it dynamically shows me right here. So let's just highlight that with a yellow because that's, that's my target. My target is to try to get that down to about $1,000 for the term. So I can increase my money for my credit card. And then I've got miscellaneous. I can say, okay, I budget an extra $100 for this or $150. So let's go $350, $350, and $350. All right, so I'm pretty close to my, my target. And now I've got a map of how to budget myself for the first quarter or for that, for that time. So there's the power of using a spreadsheet. And, and you know, something I really encourage everybody to do is to think about what their income is, what their expenses are, and really know and understand. And this is something that many, many people don't do in their lives on a regular basis. And it has a huge impact on your financial future is how you're spending your money. I mean, we can try to make extra income. That's that's pretty hard to get another job. You know, it's our time. It's our it's our life. So this tends to be fixed. But what we do have a lot of control over is our expenses, how we spend our money and then how eventually we save our money or how we um, what we do with with the savings. If we reinvest it for a rainy day or whatnot. Um, something else I'll note here is that you'll see here that I overspent in January. So I actually went into debt in January. Then I came out of debt and if, now I've got something in my bank account. All right. Well, that was kind of a condensed version of what I do in my first class with um, Excel is go over and, and explain how to build a financial spreadsheet using the three different types of data input, which is labels, values, and formulas. Taking a look at a, a simple formula, like using a simple calculation, um, and as well as looking at um, a formula like a, a function, I should say, a function right here. All right, so I think that's all I'll say for this video right now. I'll cut it off here, and I will see you guys in the next video.